Hello, dear YouTube family, and welcome back to Liftoff. While the focus was on weather in Tennessee Valley on Wednesday, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope released images of its latest discovery. A John Hopkins astronomer discovered a new star, which breaks the record for the furthest star ever observed. Aaron Dale shone brightly. One of the millions of stars observed in data collected from the Hubble Space Telescope Reionization Lensing Cluster Survey Program, lining up perfectly to stand out among the rest. The star is the most distant star yet observed and paves the way for a new way to study the distant universe. Brian Welch, a PhD candidate in astronomy and astrophysics at John Hopkins, discovered the star. His research focuses on studying distant galaxies using gravitational lensing where massive foreground objects distort and magnify the light from background objects, a pivotal process in making the Arendale discovery. The find is a huge leap further back in time from the previous single star record holder. Detected by Hubble in 2018, the star existed when the universe was about 4 billion years old, or 30% of its current age, at a time that astronomers referred to as Redshift 1.5. Scientists use the word redshift because as the universe expands, light from distant objects is stretched or shifted to longer, redder wavelengths as it travels outwards. The newly detected star is so far away that its light has taken 12.9 billion years to reach Earth, appearing to us as it did when the universe was only 7% of its current age, at redshift 6.2. The smallest objects previously seen at such a great distance are clusters of stars embedded inside early galaxies. We almost didn't believe it at first. It was so much farther than the previous most distant, highest redshift star, Welch said. He is the lead author of the paper describing the discovery, published in the March 30th journal, Nature, with co-author Dan Coe at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. Arendale is one star among millions, but in the magnified galaxy Welch was studying, the star aligned perfectly to appear magnified by a factor of thousands, highlighting the star among the rest. Welch made a model of the lensing effect of the galaxy cluster in which Arendale was found. In making that model, he discovered the object was too small and too highly magnified to be anything larger than a star. While Welch says entire galaxies look like small smudges at such far distances, gravitational lensing offered the magnification and distortion necessary to make the discovery. Because Welch made the discovery, he had the chance to choose the star's nickname. He thought Arendale, an old English word meaning morning star, was fitting, as he says the star is seen during the era often referred to as the cosmic dawn. The research team estimates that Arendale is at least 50 times the mass of our sun and millions of times as bright, rivaling the most massive stars known. But even such a brilliant, very high-mass star would be impossible to see at such great distance without the aid of natural magnification by a huge galaxy cluster, WHL 013708, sitting between us and Arendale. The mass of the galaxy cluster wraps the fabric of space, creating a powerful natural magnifying glass that distorts and greatly amplifies the light from distant objects behind it. Thanks to the rare alignment with the magnifying galaxy cluster, the star Arendale appears directly on, or extremely close to, a ripple in the fabric of space. This ripple, which is defined in optics as a caustic, provides maximum magnification and brightening. The effect is analogous to the rippled surface of a swimming pool, creating patterns of bright light on the bottom of a pool on a sunny day. The ripples on the surface act as lenses and focus sunlight to maximum brightness on the pool's floor. The caustic causes the star Arendale to pop out from the general glow of its home galaxy. At this point, astronomers are not able to determine if Arendale is a binary star, though most massive stars have at least one similar, smaller companion star. Astronomers expect that Arendale will remain highly magnified for years to come. It will be observed by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which launched in December. Webb's high sensitivity to infrared light is needed to learn more about Arendale because its light is stretched, or redshifted, to longer infrared wavelengths due to the universe's expansion. Arendale's composition will be of great interest to astronomers because it formed before the universe was filled with the heavy elements produced by successive generations of massive stars. If follow-up studies find that Arendale is only made up of primordial hydrogen and helium, it would be the first evidence for the legendary Population 3 stars, 
which are hypothesized to be the very first stars born after the Big Bang. While the probability is small, Welch admits it is enticing all the same. Arendelle existed so long ago that it may not have had all the same raw materials as the stars around us today, Welch explained. Studying Arendelle will be a window into an era of the universe that we are unfamiliar with, but led to everything that we now know. It's like we've been reading a really interesting book, but we started with the second chapter, and now we have a chance to see how it all got started, Welch said. The Hubble Space Telescope has been observing space for nearly 32 years. Unlike the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, the Hubble observes visible light. Visible light is what you and I see. It doesn't travel very far and is easily blocked by just about anything. Seeing Arendelle was a bit of a cosmic miracle. There is a cluster of galaxies about 5 billion light years away, Toller said. The cluster of galaxies has so much mass that it's actually warping space itself into a natural telescope. So space and time, I'm not exaggerating, space and time itself are curving around this cluster of galaxies and just on the edge of where this curvature is, the star happens to be perfectly lined up. Because of space and time warping, the star is a thousand times brighter than it normally would appear. Crazy, right? But why should we care about billion-year-old stars? Taller said that studying these stars is part of discovering the origins of life itself. We pretty much are sure that the first generation of stars had to be very different than the stars we see today. The ancient stars were huge, too. They were 50 times the mass of the sun. The star is a million times as bright as the sun is. However, that size and brightness had its consequences. These stars didn't last long. They probably ripped themselves apart in just about a million years. She said that the stars born at the dawn of time likely lived just a few million years, while our sun will likely live billions of years. When they did this, hydrogen and helium, which were the only elements to exist at the dawn of time, exploded and transformed. They formed all of the chemistry that makes us up. They are the calcium in my teeth, the iron in my blood, the carbon that makes me up came from these first generations of stars. Understanding these ancient stars means understanding what makes us on an elemental level. It is the study of what we are and where we came from. And that's all the information we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification button to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching until the end, and I'll see you next time.